with this, I think. Finally, it's spinning. Whoa, look at it go. 118 watts peak. Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be talking about wind turbines today. Those of you who watched the last video know that I put a little teaser in at the end of the video of the, uh, the wind turbine that I've just recently installed. Now, it's been quiet, there's been pretty much no wind for the last couple of weeks or last week or so since I've had this up. And I've been thinking, is it windy enough? Like, you know, is it in the wrong place? All this usual stuff, so nothing was happening. So last night I was sitting in the workshop and I could hear this and I'm thinking, what the hell's that? So I looked out the window and the wind turbine's spinning round. So the wind has picked up today and it's about 15 mile an hour. I'm actually sitting in the car now because I had to pop out, but at home, the wind turbine is going like the clappers and I'm monitoring it on my Victron setup. Right, there you go. See, up to about 42 watts there. I'll come back to this, guys. I'll show you what's happening. That's the wind turbine there. But anyway, let's back up right to the beginning of the story and we'll go through exactly what I did. So this is meant to be a 500 watt wind turbine, guys. And this is a sample fresh in from China, as usual. We might sell them in the store if it turns out good. Um, but basically it's got 1.5 meter um, wingspan, wingspans that thing. And this is actually the 24 volt version. There's a 12 and a 24 and a 48 volt version of these, but I've picked the 24 and I'll show you why later. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty substantial bit of kit. Weighs 13 and a half kilos. Um, the wind, the lowest wind speed I think is something like 2.5 meters a second and the, the rated wind speed is about 11 meters a second which I think is about 25 mile an hour. So let's show you how I've set it up. So this is my Kirby special temporary stroke permanent <laughs> setup. So I'm using scaffold pole um, with these connectors here. I did have another one, I've got another one down the bottom but it's a long story but I was trying to get this a bit higher and I had to adjust it all and all this sort of stuff so I'm going to get another couple of these because two probably isn't really enough on this and I think this is like a 48.3 mil scaffold tube. Whoa, it's picking up again. Oh, it's picking up again. So this here is a three phase cable, pretty high quality, just like mains cable but um, pretty good quality copper and this runs all the way through here up there onto the fence, didn't have enough so I had to do that. Um, and it goes into the workshop. Right, so it's the other end of the white cable, comes in up there, comes down here, goes into this little dodgy little junction box, um, and then goes into this charger, which is the one that came with the, um, with the turbine. Now, I've been doing a lot of reading about this, and these things aren't bad, but they haven't got very big diodes inside, so, I don't know, expect it probably to fail or, or something. So I have actually invested in one of these, which is a bigger bridge rectifier. Now, for those that don't know, the idea of this, is you just have your three phases going into there and these three wires here basically and then it gives you DC. So AC comes in, rectifies it and it comes out as DC. So this is kind of perfect for what I want to use. Now the thing with this charger is it actually comes with a kit so I wanted to test it out and just wanted to see you know how it how well it worked. Um, also it's a little bit more advanced than using the rectifier because it has various sort of cutoff features as well. It will regulate the charge. Now you might have also noticed that this is a 24 volt um, charge controller. Now, the reason for this, you, you will know that I've got a big bank of lithium batteries here, lithium phosphate batteries, about 200 amp hour 4S pack, so, you know, about 13 volts it sits at most of the time. Now, the theory for getting the 24 volt controller is it will be well above the voltage that I need most of the time. Now, I'm not going to connect my lithium batteries directly to this because otherwise you're going to get issues, you, you, all the voltages are wrong. So you're not going to be able to connect that directly to the lithium batteries. Bad idea. So what I've gone and done is I've gone out of here into this little monitor so I can at least just see what's going on. And then you see these wires going into here into a Victron charge controller. So the Victron charge controllers support lithium, so you can charge lithium batteries with those. You can set all the voltages, it's extremely customizable, and so far I've not had any problems charging, um, you know, from solar with these, so, you know, it's a really good system. Also, it links into all my other um, stuff in here as well, so that the charge controllers talk to the rest of the system, um, to the Raspberry Pi, and they, it allows you to monitor everything, basically, and I'll show you that now. So if we come up here, you can see the Victron control panel up here, and then this line here, which is the wind turbine, or wind generator, one of the two. Well, it went up to about 50 watts then, it's gone back down again. So this is something to get used to. I'm not used to this kind of like fluctuating power, 
which is obviously with solar, it's completely different. Um, so yeah, you can go into this. So if you go into this, you'll actually see the voltage here, which is going up to sort of 17 volts thereabouts, and then your current, which is coming from the actual, so this says PV, but it's not, because obviously we're connected to a wind turbine. So you can see the voltage here, and you can see the current kind of trying to make its way up. Um, this one here is actually the current going into the battery, but we've actually got a load going out because we're running stuff in here. Um, you know, USB stuff that's connected directly to the, the load output on that charger. All this other stuff is connected to an inverter, so we're completely off grid at the moment. And it's just fascinating watching these voltages and just seeing what the MPPT does to try and, you know, get the power out of the turbine. And then as it's, when it's charging, I think what happens is it has to go about five volts above the battery voltage to, for the charger to start. And then after that, it kind of gets going and then it only has to be like one volt above it, I think. Um, but you'll see this thing up here, this off means that the charging is off at the moment. And then when it kicks in, it will actually turn, it will say ESS, which is energy storage. So you can see this sort of fluctuating around, you know, around sort of 18, 19 volts. We have got a bit of current going in. You can see that's gone to zero, that's going up now. 1.4 amps going in, see ESS up there. So you're kind of up and down. So as you can tell, I'm pretty chuffed and pretty excited about all this stuff as usual. Um, I get super excited. Uh, and it's mainly because I just wasn't seeing any power before and, and I just wasn't seeing anything. And I was even like kind of spinning the blades manually and just seeing what kind of voltage come out. But it's just like all this stuff, like you just don't have the conditions, then it just doesn't work. Um, you know, solar's a little bit more forgiving, obviously, because you know, you're always gonna get something out of a panel when there's light on it. But we've obviously the wind side of things, you're not. If it don't spin, then it don't spin. Now we've got easterly winds today, which seems to be working best with this turbine. We've had some sort of northerly and, and maybe some south winds, but I, I still don't think they've been as high as they are today. So hopefully it is gonna work where it is. We got a bit of a shelter from the house, so there's gonna be some disturbed airflow there, I reckon, but I don't know, we'll have to just have to say, I might be able to move it. Um, I might be able to move the turbine further into the garden. Um, and yeah, that one nice, Sarah. <laughs> so this meter probably wasn't a great idea because actually it's only gonna get powered when the, the wind turbine spins because there's no um, kind of, you know, there's no voltage present on here because it goes through the charge controller. Normally you'd connect it to the battery and then that would power it. Now this actually has radio control five volt level input on the side, which I believe you can just plug in and it will just keep this meter powered up. So I might look into doing that and see if I can just get this to just run continuously because right now it doesn't log any data because every time it turns off it just resets. So every time the wind turbine stops it resets. But we have got a way of measuring the power on the Victron thing. Um, but it doesn't look correct to me. I don't think it looks correct. So if we look at the history in here, it's saying 72 watts. Now, I was seeing 110 watts on the actual watt meter at one point when I was in here, so I don't know what's happening there. Maximum voltage looks all right. Charge time, two hour, 14 continuous. I, I don't know, maybe. I mean, this thing is actually designed for solar, so it, it hasn't got a real time clock or anything, so it will just reset when um, it's dark for a predetermined amount of time. I mean, it hasn't reset today. It's been running all day, this particular line. I'm not really 100% sure how these Victron meters work out what's a day or not, but anyway, it looks like it's working, but we're only seeing, you know, six, what hours is that? Yeah, I had to think for a minute, it's 60 watt hours. So yeah, it's, it's not a lot, is it? I mean, you know, the wind is 15 miles an hour. Um, that's pretty common. So I don't know, for, for a couple of hours, of, of kind of run time. You know, there's lots of different things with this. You can try five blades. This is only a free blade. You know, you can, if you're in low wind areas, you can put five blades on, I believe. You know, I've been reading up stuff, so it's a bit of a learning curve, but this turbine is supposed to kick out 500 watts um, at 10 meters per second. So 10 meters per second in miles per hour, I don't even think, I think this is like 25 mile an hour winds or something. So we've definitely not had that yet. So it's definitely gonna be something I'm gonna keep an eye on anyway. Well, 60 watt hours is nearly five amp hours, isn't it? At, at um, 13 volts. So it's better than nothing, really. Right, I'm gonna see if I can find one of those little RC connectors. That's one, isn't it? And then I can try and get that meter powered up so that it stays on. And I'm just gonna mount that controller properly, I think. Right, I got this wired up to this battery now. It's not what we're gonna use, but it does work, it just means that it just doesn't turn off when that voltage goes down. Right, so this is a strange thing, guys. Look, 90 watts peak. Now, I've never seen 90 watts on the actual Victron thing. 
up there. So I think it's something to do with the charging power. That must be the charging power that it's managed to get. But this meter is right at the front of the chain. So it's you got 130 watts peak there. It just, <laughs> just went up to 130 watt peak. Right guys, I've installed it. So I've stuck the controller on the wall. I've put this meter up the top as well. And actually in the end, what I've decided to do is run it power it from the load output on the charge controller. I did test it because I wasn't sure whether it would work, but um, yeah, it works. And there's no current really running through this little wire. If anything happens, then that wire will just burn, I suppose. But, but that just means it all stays on now. Even when the um, turbine stops, it just stays on. So the idea is just to let this run and just, you know, let it capture what it does. That's it for the wind today then. Right guys, so it's a couple of days later. We haven't had any more wind, so there's been no more activity on the turbine. Um, so I'm gonna bring this video to a close. Now there's a couple of things I haven't covered. And um, one of them is dump loads. If you know about this stuff, you know that when your batteries are fully charged, you need somewhere to dump the power um, for the wind turbine so it doesn't, you know, basically overrun itself and shatter and destroy itself, um, which could be quite fun to see. Um, but nevertheless, yeah, I didn't cover that side of it because what I wanna do with this setup is actually feed that into a grid tire inverter so when the batteries are charged it actually will just go into a never-ending load of, of basically um, the rest of the house a bit like what i do with my excess solar energy that i generate in here that's more than enough to cover this this um, workshop and then the rest of it goes into the house the other thing was this regulator i will be testing this out to find out what happens maybe it will get rid of that discrepancy between um, this meter and the vitron side of things or it, it might sort out some charging discrepancy or power that we're losing somewhere. I don't know, we'll try it and we'll see what actually happens. So the other thing some of you will wanna know is, is it worth it? Is it worth me getting a wind turbine? Should I bother? Well, it's like all these things. I think if you're going into it in, in a sort of purely financial sense and you're thinking, oh, is it an investment? Am I gonna get this money back? And all that sort of thing. Well, <laughs> you're probably gonna struggle and well, it's gonna take you a long time to do it, like all this stuff. But, you know, solar takes a long time as well. And you've got, it's not as easy as solar to do this. And I quite like the challenge of it. So I think if you're gonna do it, treat it as a hobby and look at the benefits that you're gonna get aside of that. Who knows, you might be in a really windy area and it might do totally better than solar on a really gray day. The other thing right now as we're approaching sort of summertime so you know there's less wind and the windiest seasons I think probably you know the end and the beginning of the year so we'll see what happens anyway guys hope you've enjoyed watching the video go check out the store links in the description you can subscribe do all the usual stuff I'll see you in the comments and I'll catch you in the next video